Mmm. I like blood. I love sucking blood. But I'm not a vampire. I'm a... <laughs> what am I? I'm a... Yeah, okay, here's the... Okay, here's the riddle. I... What, like... What's something that likes to suck blood, but isn't a vampire, and... It's a... It's a kind of bug. Uh, politician. Woo! <laughs> 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 that's a good one. Oh, that's... That's funny. Uh, no, we're... Uh, this... Mosquito. It's gonna be mosquito. We're talking about mosquitoes today. <laughs> it's... It's everyone's favorite podcast about mosquitoes. Uh... That's Mr. Mosquito to you. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the Pixel Report. We play an old video game every week and then talk about it. And this week... We played a game about mosquitoes. But before we start talking about that, I think, I don't know, Eric, do you have a thing? Do you have another oh, yeah. thing you want to talk oh, about yeah. first? In honor of today's uh, subject matter, okay. I thought, what is everyone's favorite bug? <laughs> mm. Mosquito. It's a green bug. I like a, a gr- what's green, a, green what's bug. A, what's a green bug? That's your answer? A green bug. I don't know what they're called. They're very small. They're green. They look like little aphids. Emeralds. No. <coughs> uh, I like red bugs. <laughs> yeah, I like black bugs. I like white ones. <laughs> Green bug. That's what they're called. My Good favorite answer. bug is the mega hiss cockroach. Omega Trunton. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're going to have to give me some context there. Okay, it's this thing I keep in my basement. It's like a three foot cockroach that I attached a laser eye on. <laughs> that's uh, That sounds terrifying. <laughs> Named him, named I, him uh, Tricky. There's no Cyclops <laughs> reference in there? No, just Tricky. Tricky. I used to kind of hate spiders, but now, I mean, spi- spiders kind of as a bug. No. They're not They're insects. They're an arachnid, But John. this bug is like kind of like an all-encompassing. No. Not the right, movie not. is called Eight-Legged Freaks, not Eight-Legged what about, Bugs. Uh, what about, what about bats? Are those bugs? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I like bats. <laughs> The bats are You are dope. what you eat. You're bat crazy, John. No, I don't know. Um, it's, uh, this is a hard question. This is a hard... There are so many kinds of bugs there that are, are lots cool. Of, there are a lot of cool bugs. That's uh, why I thought it would be an interesting I was just going to say it's hard because bugs suck. <laughs> but also, it's, it's like a little bit limited because you can only pick insects that have six legs, a hard exoskeleton with their wings covered. No, that's that's not all bugs. Like, a centipede is a bug. I just, like, can't no. think of any bugs, so I'm gonna Google coolest bugs. Ladybug. You know what? Ladybugs I, suck. I pick, I have wait, my wait, pick. Wait, wait, John, John, go to the left. Oh, quick. bees. Bees are cool. Bees are really fun. Fireflies. Insects, dude. John, what's that bug the in the way, on the way left? The second bug. On the, on the far left. You have to, you have to... Panorpa commu- communist? Click the arrow. Click the arrow. Oh, okay. Did you guys know that scientists had to adapt to idiots that like one. you guys calling say? all insects bugs? Beetle, yeah. There's a Hercules beetle. Those I, are cool. That's my favorite. My favorite bug Scientists is... had to make up true bugs because <laughs> people like you <coughs> called centipedes bugs and <laughs> called bumblebees bugs. There are a lot of cool bugs, but I'm going to go with the Hercules beetle because that thing is just metal. I don't really understand uh, what qualifies as a bug anymore. I was explaining it before, and then Eric was like, no. He said they had to have six legs. And I didn't no, they have that. to have six legs. They have to have a hard exoskeleton, and their wings have to be covered by exoskeleton. Okay, so I'm going to Google what is a bug, and okay. it just says a small insect. Yeah, well, look up true bug. Okay, what is, <laughs> what is that's, a... That's the term that scientists had to coin. <laughs> what is a true bug? My favorite true, true bugs. Bug Ask a biologist. Click it. Money glitch in Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good bug. Did as much okay, gold. I think this says not all insects are bugs. <laughs> the key yeah. difference between true bugs and other insects is their mouth parts. True bugs suck. True. That is true. They suck. Like I said before, uh, true bugs have specialized mouth parts to suck juices. <laughs> Mostly they suck fluid from plants, but there are some true bugs, like bed bugs, <laughs> that feed on animals. This is stupid. This is a bunch of crap. Did you know the assassin right, well, bug okay, has, wanna, a, has a proboscis Sorry, that let's rephrase. Has favorite a, insect. Okay, you're talking over my cool insect fireflies. facts. Fireflies. And I don't like it. I'm sorry. This is cool insect facts with Aiden Keys. <laughs> Aiden? The assassin bug sticks its proboscis in another animal. 
It's for what? another insect. Pro- it's proboscis. All right. Which is like a sucker, like you're talking about. The little suckers. Okay. And it, Welcome it, to the proboscis report. And it in- <laughs> injects the animal with acid that liquefies its insides, and then it sucks it out like a straw. That's pretty neat. That's pretty metal. It's gross. Bugs are cool. I like praying mantises. Yeah, those are tight. Those, those are, are cool. Yeah. They are those the ones that they bite the heads off their lovers? Yeah, the females. Yeah. They're also like really chill. It's just chill bugs you know, that bite heads off. You know, see them, they're just like they're just sitting there. Yeah. Stick bugs, those are cool. Yeah. A lot of people think they're lame, but butterflies are cool. Yeah. yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. Don't touch their wings. No, that'll wreck them. That'll yeah. wreck them. That'll fucking kill them. Our population is in massive decline. There's yeah. like two left. It's, it's <laughs> just, <laughs> my, they're going the way of that carrier pigeon. My sister actually worked on like a monarch conservation thing going on right now. It's good work. We need more people like her. The monarchs, once the monarch population dies, humans will follow shortly yeah. after. <laughs> and then the rhinos. Yeah. Speaking of bugs, <laughs> are mosquitoes bugs? No, they're insects. But some insects they suck. Are, yeah, they suck, dude. Suck. Just, the they were just, bugs, we were just reading suck. about true bugs, and it said the ones that suck are true bugs, and mosquitoes yeah, suck. That's one qualifier. I don't know. I don't want to talk about this anymore. You know that I did not think this would be the most contentious question of the week we've I ever had. I hate you all. <laughs> <laughs> You're not true bugs. <laughs> Only I know what true bugs. <laughs> you must join my church of the bug to understand the insectoids. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Mr. Mosquito is the game that we played this week. Yeah. Eric, why don't you pick the game, right? I did. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Mr. Mosquito? Mr. Mosquito is a PlayStation 2 game developed by Zoom Inc. That Ooh, was released yeah. in 2001 in Japan. And then um, by uh, the distributor was, uh, or the publisher was actually Sony, but the developer Zoom. And then it was published by actually Eidos Interactive. And they, do a, they publish a lot of stuff. Yeah, was there like a fresh, fresh games series? Yeah, I don't really know what that is. I think it was just like more unique titles for right. Eidos. Um Weird freak games. Yeah. So the developer Zoom. I, I can't find whoever the um, whoever the. Oh my god. <laughs> the the uh, the designers or I can't find any like name attached to Mr. Mosquito. Yeah, there's not a lot of info on, like, Zoom, Inc. Yeah. The, but, the so, here's some of the games. Like, the mo- I think the most famous game they are, they made was Mr. Mosquito. But other than that, they made this game called Phalanx, which was re which is, like, I'm, I think I played it for the Game Boy. It was, like, a space shooter. Um, mm-hmm. so, so... What about Lagoon? Uh, Lagoon? They made Lagoon. Oh, oh did, did you play did you? that game? Oh, the, we did play Lagoon. Wait, That's yeah, right. It is oh the God, Lagoon you, you guys played. I saw that this morning when I was looking up the stuff, yeah. and I thought, oh, that probably isn't the same Lagoon they no, played. No, it, it totally is. That was the second game we ever played for Pixel Report. So we're, we're kicking it old school. I thought, because it said it came out for the Sharp X68000, so I thought, okay, well, obviously we didn't play any games mm-hmm. for the Sharp X. Uh, it was a, it was on other stuff. Yeah, it was on the Super Nintendo. So, so <coughs> the Actually, John, I want you to just click on Phalanx and look at the box art. All right, I'm clicking on Phalanx. I'm looking at the box art. It's a space shooter. Oh, my God, dude. It's a space shooter. It's a dude playing a banjo? Yes, but the game is a space shooter. That's pretty tight. (laughs) I'm going to throw this up in the chat. So, um, (laughs) (laughs) so, do you want me to tell everyone what uh, the game is about? Sure. So, Mr. Mosquito, um, as you might have guessed, you play as a mosquito in this game. You have invaded the Yamada household. And you now must suck the inhabitants' blood so that you might survive through the winter. Mm-hmm. That's the plot. <laughs> and um, they they're trying to find ways to foil you and your mosquito ness. Mm-hmm. This family. It's kind of got a chibi robo feel, where like you're kind of like a fly on the wall of like this kind of mel- uh, mellow family drama. I don't want to call it like a mellow drama, but like mellow, like nothing really happens. Like it's not like there's some it's, big conflict. Or yeah, anything. it's some mellow drama. <laughs> this game is like Shadow of the Colossus, but it's uh, voyeuristic and pervy. 
It's a little pervy. Yeah, yeah you can, it definitely you can is a little it. bit pervy. Um, I'd say it's like Shadow of the Colossus meets Reign of Fire Dragon segments. Yeah. Meets Chibi Robo. Yeah. Meets Chibi Robo. But not any of the Meets Galdon. It's like Ace Whoa. Combat. John, save your criticism yeah, 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 for later. Mario. Ace Combat meets Mario, is that what you just said? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We all, we, all, we all have our opinions. We all have our opinions, it's true. Um, the gist of describing the gameplay is like the game is set up in a different kind of arcade stages, kind of, where you're in a, we're in a particular room with a member of the Yamada family and you have to suck their blood without dying. Um, and so the game's mechanics, generally speaking, are kind of like a mix between stealth and action in the sense that you're trying to sneak up and get on their um, weak points <coughs> so don't insect repellent and suck the blood out of them. Um, but sometimes if you get caught, you don't just instantly die unless you get caught while sucking blood. In which case, then they'll just run around the room trying to hit you and you have to hit their relax points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if relax. You, and then they, they kind of just chill and they forget about, um, about you. I think it would have... I understand why they did the relax points, but it doesn't really make sense in context for well, obvious. Save your criticisms. We're not, you know. Oh, no, no, I'm I not mean, trying to no, criticize. I know what it is. It makes sense because mosquitoes are masters of the art of chi. Yeah. And they're triggering their chi points. Yeah, yeah. What I was, I wasn't yeah. trying to criticize the game. I was more trying to say it seems like their way of putting action segments into the game. Because like it's yeah. otherwise unrealistic to think you'd have like an action segment with mosquito versus human, mm-hmm. right? You yeah, you do not want to get slapped in Mr. Mosquito. No, let's, send let's you put into it that way. Battle mode. You you don't. If you get slapped too hard, then you won't even enter battle mode because you'll just be dead. Yeah. So yeah, arcadey kind of stage things. You can switch your color palette out. There's like arcadey stuff where like getting the level done in quicker time. Or in like beating battles in a specific time unlocks other <coughs> things. There's little secrets hidden throughout the levels, um, but that's like the gist of the game. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to add? Uh, let's see. Um, it takes place during the summer. Yes, you're and stocking up blood for winter. I, I said that. Everyone <laughs> goes crazy during the summer. You can trigger aspects of the environment with your face. Mm-hmm. So if you want to like turn on the stereo to get someone to reveal a part of their body that isn't revealed in the position they're currently in, you can like turn off the lights or turn on the stereo, yeah. mm-hmm. or uh, generally just be a big old nuisance. Yeah, be yeah. a bad. You're a you're a bad, a bad little boy. mosquito. Yeah, this is a you're game. An anti-hero. Where, where, yeah, you're an anti-hero. You play the bad guy, but the game kind of sets it up with this wonderful, like, documentary lady who just kind of, like, gives you free reign. Like, saying, yeah. like you're not really that bad. Like, you just got to survive. You got to mm-hmm. suck blood. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah, I posted the intro video for this game on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the It's top report. intro video. It's a weird one. Yeah, it's pretty weird, yeah. Um, uh, here's something. Speaking of weird, in 2008, Game Informer named Mr. Mosquito one of the top ten weirdest games of all time. It was also yeah. included on the G4 list of weird games. Right up and our alley. Games Radar included Mr. Mosquito on its list of the top seven games that are cheaper than therapy as a cure for entomophobia. Which is the fear of bugs. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and it was also on its list of rubbish animals that got turned into video game heroes. Which I don't know what that is. It's a lot of lists out as there. As we already uh, said, Games Radar, Mr. Mosquito is an anti-hero. He's not a traditional hero. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. Mosquito was the fifth best-selling video game in Japan during its release week, with 41,006 copies yeah, sold. Yeah, it was actually quite successful in Japan. Um, it got re-released and stuff, and then they yeah, made a sequel. Yeah, they made a sequel, yeah. So. The sequel was never released abroad, because it wasn't successful outside of Japan. I think that's pretty much it, before we uh, do, a, do a little mosquito nosedive into our thoughts here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I will say, Mr. Mosquito is one ugly bug. It's not a good looking bug. You know, you can change the color of your mosquito, but that doesn't, you can only you can only go so far with just changing you the color. You can't make a mosquito beautiful. Yeah. Not a good looking game in general. Ooh, yeah. I'm gonna throw it out there. It's not. I do like the color of his wings. They're like slime green. Yeah. But like he is that. a nasty, <laughs> pervy looking creature. <laughs> 
intentionally pervy uh, yeah, design. There's, there's definitely a pervy aspect to this game. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we can get into that, I guess. But first, did you guys like anything about it? Or did you guys like that it was pervy? Do you guys like anything about Mr. Mosquito other than the fact that it's I pervy? I mean, we've played a couple pervy Japanese games. Like, Stretch Panic has some weird stuff going on. Yeah. And that game was really good. So What's that? Let's say that there's a there's a line between <coughs> women with giant balloons on their chest <laughs> and watching a teen girl in the bath. Yeah, and then trying to suck her blood. <laughs> yeah. And the, the blood suck point is, like, right above her chest. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But you're pinching the women's nipples in Stretch Panic. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so? so <laughs> that's with the demon hand, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're doing it with the demon hand, not with our mosquito nose, so yeah. it's all bad. <laughs> no, it's the, I mean... The, this, you know, Mr. Mosquito is kind of more of a, a realistic yeah. thing, so that, the per, you know, it makes the perviness a little more... Yeah, impactful. There's a little bit of like surveillance or like voyeurism and like the yeah, way because you're like a mosquito who's trying to stay. <coughs> yeah, um, you like watch them doing whatever they're doing before you strike. So, yeah. but I, I guess to me, the perviness doesn't detract from the game. It just is like it's just there for me. It's just kind of silly. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, like it's just kind of silly. Like, it's a perv simulator. I would prefer I would prefer a game that's more like TV Robo, where like it's like it sets place in a similar context, but like there isn't this kind of stuff. But I understand why it's in there because it's kind of part of like this kind of media culture in Japan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without um, the without the bath thing, you could just think of like a. You're an inside look at some like family drama, kind of like Chibi Robo, where this immigrant like Japanese family, uh, the mother is this like, traditional woman, and mm -hmm. the Americanized young girl doesn't, uh, you know, like yeah, except uh, just kind of like interpersonal relationship simulator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the dad is just like not there; he's just like watching TV. Mm -hmm. so, Everyone's watching TV. She, like you hear their like inner like monologue, like their thoughts. Or I don't mm -hmm. know if they're just like talking out loud to themselves. But like in the bathroom, the girl will go in between like shower attack. I wonder what's on TV now. And it's pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I, do you think that TV plays a central role because the game is making a commentary on the voyeuristic mm -hmm. subculture? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Perhaps. I know. I do think like there is commentary on the subculture. Like it's kind of I would say it's almost on the nose a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, speaking of which... Because you can enter also like a, almost like a camera view. The mosquito view is almost like a night vision camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. It's okay. Oh, I forgot what I was going to say, too. I Must have been important. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Do we want to go to things I we think, liked? Well, I was trying to go into that, and then you guys started talking about all this crap. I mean, crap, we're, we're talking, so. about, things we're talking that, about the games. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I mean, these are things Stop that I like. Stop talking about the game. game. This needs to be a structured conversation. <laughs> we can only say what's about good the mosquito first. mosquito game. All right. Okay. Mr. Mosquito. <laughs> I thought... Do you, what do you like about Mr. Mosquito, Aiden? I liked some of the quirkiness of the game, like the announcer lady... And I liked that when the people in the family were communicating in between levels, they were like huddled up like a hockey team. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I thought they were like lying I, on the ground looking up. Yeah. I didn't understand like what, like what was that supposed to be? Like that can't because okay, it's like this camera angle where you're kind of like down below them looking up at their yeah. heads and they're oh, looking really? down at I you. I took it as like I was above them looking down on their heads. But I think, like, the point was that they didn't want to animate the mouse because they thought it would look bad. Yeah, so they but it's like... I was wondering, like, when I first started, I was like, <coughs> did they not have, like, they couldn't put the bodies on the screen when they were talking or something? No, like, I think it was just they didn't, they want the mouse moving. I, I feel like it's supposed to re represent that you're, like, something small looking up at them, like you're yeah, a mosquito, but it, like, makes sense, but it also doesn't, because... It doesn't work well. It's It's, like... If you were the mosquito looking up at them, they they would just kill you, because mm. that's like the whole point. That's interesting. I viewed you. those segments as just being like, uh, like, extra from like the main plot. Like that wasn't the mosquito vision or anything. To me, that right. was just like, like I don't think like, that I don't think that's way. what it was supposed to be. But that was like the only, like way yeah. I could take that camera angle. You yeah, know, because it was like so weird. Like I don't know. Yeah, like, it's like I guess that. I just took it as like we'll have their the top half of their head yeah, the showing half. rather than nothing. Like that's yeah. how I took it. And they just wanted to have some dialogue to build up the characters and their relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
is just um, kind of their weird way of like uh, presenting dialogue like how that 70s show does like the weed cam it's right back yeah and sure it was their own little take it's just the skeet cam yeah. skeet cam because there's like there's those segments too with like only one person yeah you don't see the one person it's a it's a documentary confessional yeah yeah something like that uh so yeah I like some of the so you like that you like that quirky stuff yeah right. I would say yeah I thought that was pretty funny like when they would come back and you'd see this like disgusting view of a bald man's head and oh yeah <laughs> yeah but this bad voice acting comes in and you're like okay <coughs> yeah I would say I absolutely loved the documentary like voice lady mm-hmm. yeah like that was, in the menus that was one for the good category for sure she yeah. was she was weird and funny that was like that was just so it gave so much personality to the game yeah for me. I, imagine if you started the game and it didn't start with that and they just plopped you into a level like, yeah yeah it just sets the tone so well it's mm-hmm. like this game is like not taking itself that seriously and it's mm-hmm. gonna like it's gonna like you know rub its elbow into you and be like haha this is kind of funny isn't it yeah like you're playing fucking mosquito <laughs> like it's yeah. not like this is a serious game about mosquitoes get it you're a mosquito <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> I was kind of like speed it up lady come on yeah, it was yeah, a little long there for a while a little long in the tooth sometimes you press start and then like it doesn't like go to a new screen or anything it just it yeah. stays on like the just title screen going. and she just goes and yeah. you, you see like the credits at the bottom yeah, of the yeah screen, she could have talked a little faster but I still really like that way to start the game they don't make games like that anymore that's for sure <laughs> no they don't <laughs> oh, yeah, I liked. It. Yeah, it was a little long, but I still yeah I appreciated. Like Eric was saying, like the the tone uh, setting is pretty important for the game to have a good impact. I think. Do you guys know how this game ends? No, I watched it on YouTube. Yeah, I watched it on YouTube too. They're yeah. all they're all bit up. The family they have like mosquito bites on their eyelids, like they can't even open their eyes because you you got them so good. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I the one that I watched was in Japanese, so I don't know what they were saying, but. They're, like, going to take a family photo for some reason of all their messed up faces. Well, that's, like, the central narrative is that the mom wants them to take a photo. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. So they they uh, go to take their photo, and then the mosquito flies into the frame, and they all freak out, and, like, right when she takes the photo. So the photo like, is, yeah, is all of them freaking out, and then the mosquito in the background. Yeah, and then the final the, level, you the, have to traverse the whole house and get all three of them. And yeah. you, the only way you can suck them is by, like, literally knocking them out. Mm. Yep. And then the house sits on fire, and they all die. Or the fu- <laughs> that's I don't think that happens. No, no, it does. The house gets set no, on fire as you fly away. Well, they are like a huge I know, fat they don't, mosquito. They, at they the don't end. die. No, no. I mean, it's implied <laughs> that that their house isn't ruined, and that they're in the house. Yeah. They're in the burning house. But the ending, like the actual ending, is what I just described, and then it goes to the credits. So yeah, so it sounds yeah. like we kind of helped them through there. Issues. Yeah, we're a helpful mosquito. Yeah, they're yeah. better at the end of it, yeah. It's kind of hilarious. In the sequel, they go on a vacation to Hawaii to get away from the mosquito, and then you're, you're the mosquito in Hawaii. <laughs> you're going to keep bothering the same pretty family. I, I say, like, I, did, I think the plot's in, like, an A for me. Like, I just, I, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Like, and it, it, like I like the way that it's, like, it's surreal and the way that it extends up, like... You know what I mean? Like, it starts off kind of normal, like, just mm-hmm. like a family, a mosquito biting you. Then at the end, it's like, all this crazy stuff is happening, mm-hmm. just because of one mosquito. It's kind of like that episode, The Fly, of uh, Breaking Bad. Sure. Yeah. Um, I know that, like, the characters were probably supposed to be annoying, but I just, like, couldn't stand listening to the characters talk <laughs> a lot of the time. Yeah, well, the voice <laughs> acting was rough, but... Yeah. Um, I don't know if this story was in the forefront for me. Like, I, I played it, I was fine with it, but, like, I guess maybe because I didn't see the conclusion or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a story for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not, like, well-developed characters. <coughs> it just, to me, it struck me as kind of, like, this surreal thing that's kind of making some interesting commentary on some stuff. And mm-hmm. I thought, like, I was able to pretty easily, like, for me, most video game characters are already annoying. So, like, when they're yeah. just blatantly annoying, it, it actually is almost less annoying to me. Um, but, yeah, yeah. I would say the voice acting doesn't bother me because it's a game from 2001. Like, you're not going to find any game from 2001 that has better voice acting than this. Mm. From 2001. EverQuest. Does that even have voice acting? Uh, the voice chat. I don't know. It, it, <laughs> it sounds like this game was, like, localized in Japan, though. Because oh yeah, either it's accents. Japanese people or it's like non-Japanese people putting on Japanese accents, so they're yeah. basically talking Japanese English, 
or like English with a Japanese accent, and it's yeah. like weird. I don't understand why localization companies like at and like for like a ten year period mm-hmm. did this kind of crap where it's like if we're gonna localize our game, but it takes place in Japan, let's have them have a, a weird act like a Japanese accent. Mm-hmm. Like why not just say the game takes place in L.A. and they're just an Asian family in L.A. Like yeah. it, like it, I don't. I guess you, may, you might miss some of the Because then you, stuff. you look at the house and it's a Japanese style architecture house and you're like, they'd have to redo all that stuff. I don't know if they'd have to really redo yeah, it. Yeah, you'd be like, they don't have houses like that in LA. Yeah, <laughs> they don't. Um, other things that people liked? Uh, good sense of scale. Yeah. I appreciate the Katamari effect. I appreciate the, yes, the Katamari effect, the uh, Chibi Robo effect. Three years before Katamari. Uh, both of those five games. Years before Chibi Robo. Well, mm-hmm. both of those games did it way better but it was still pretty effective in this one okay the the power-ups were very small like that kind of yeah. threw off my sense of <clears throat> a little bit when i was flying on, on the, like the bed in the first level and then all of a sudden I'm like wait what's that and i got closer and closer and closer and it was a little hard like, wow i like it is i liked small. how small they were i thought that that <laughs> like that added to the experience to me like it made it feel like i was discovering stuff in these small stages like if they're just giant floating hearts around that were mm-hmm. really easy to see from across the room i think it wouldn't have felt as neat yeah that's true i okay what i do this sometimes but you're gonna say something you don't like no okay I'm going what? to pitch Mr. Mosquito 3. Okay. What is your idea for Mr. Mosquito 3? It is a mosquito management sim. Uh-huh. And the mosquitoes only have, like, a one-day lifespan. So you have to make sure that you're bringing back enough blood to reproduce and then die. And then uh, you have a limited amount of time for each one. And you have to keep expanding and expanding. Sounds okay. It's like State of Decay 2. Yeah. State of Mosquito and you, you, 3. Your hub base is a heckin' birdbath. A heckin' birdbath? Yeah, so you okay. have to make defenses to defend against birds. <laughs> so it's a little Metal Gear Survive there. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. I'd probably play that. Just put it out on Switch. Yeah, I like uh, it. Yeah, play it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, uh, anything else that people liked? Uh, I a, you know, I got a lot of things all right. to say. A lot of other things, huh? Okay, yeah. I've gone through my entire list. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not a negative Nancy like you. Yeah, I'm not um, a negative Nancy just because I got opinions. Um, I wasn't talking to you, Aiden. You're a good guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, John. I, I'm a bad guy. Um, <laughs> You're not. Right, so I would just say that, like, all right, I can understand why someone might not like the controls initially. But, like, after, like, two stages, it was really fluid for me. Like, it didn't bother, the controls didn't bother me very much. And so the combat and, like, the cell and, like, just the way that this game flows from a gameplay perspective, I thought was unique and fun. Like, I just wanted to keep playing levels because, like, I was having fun, like, being, like, this sneaky little fucking mosquito and, like, going in and sneaking up on people. And, like, the game, even when you lose, you're rewarded because you, like, learn where the, the weak spots are and you're getting better at at, like playing against the whatever level it is mm-hmm. and so um there are like a few frustrating gameplay moments like there was one level where like a, when you get later in the game you have to like suck multiple parts of the person's body and there's one where like i was supposed to be on the back of the girl's neck and it was just really hard to get that consistently like i do like my stages to get there and i only get there like once every five or six times what? but yeah, it's, like, in between her hair and her shirt. Yeah, and so... you can't penetrate either of those things. Yeah, yeah. So, like, what, yeah. So, like, sometimes if you... Because, like, there's, like, a zoom function for those at home where, like, you, like, lock on to where you want to go and you'll zoom in and then you'll latch on to them. But if you hit, like, another part of their body while zooming in, you'll, you'll get bounced off. And sometimes because those things are, like, those weak spots aren't always available, it can be tricky. But I would just say overall... The gameplay to me was very satisfying. Like, it was just like an arcade game. Like, to me, like, this is just arcade kind of style of gameplay, where it's, like, not, like, open world, like, or anything. It's just, like, you have one stage and another stage and another stage, and each stage, it's just, you know, you're just trying to learn the ropes of this particular stage, but it's mostly following the same pattern of gameplay. Um, kind of like, you know, like, different Pac-Man levels or Dig Dug levels or something. And so, to me, that was just really satisfying and enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And I... Um, I want to just keep playing this game, like, um, so that's what I would say about, like, on the good ca- column, is, like, I did enjoy that, and I like the, 
the music was just kind of, uh, I thought it was fine. That was good too. Yeah, I don't know about the music. I it like was, it was there. Rather. I like when you uh, after you complete a level, there's like a funky beat that always plays. Yeah, yeah. that's what and I'm that thinking right. of. Like, so, of, uh, that was one of the things I like. I didn't mind the other music because I thought it was just kind of like corny. Like this whole game is kind of corny. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know. I didn't think the gameplay was. Tell me about it. It, to me, it just felt like you're flying around aimlessly, and, like, the flying controls are fine, but basically you're just flying around until a, like, weak point just kind of shows up randomly. Like, I didn't really understand how that was supposed to work, because the weak points don't show up right away, um, but then eventually they'll just show up. Mm-hmm. Well, and... <laughs> so the thing is you have to get really close to find them? I was, like, okay, so the very first level I was flying, like, all up and down with the person and not getting any weak points, and then I just, like, flew away... And then it just like showed up I think when I that, came back. Yeah, I, I, I think that like that's just the thing to help players like who are having trouble. Yeah, so, but that's like the only way that you can actually suck blood is to lock onto the weak point and then hit the. The first level button. I think is a misnomer because the first level is designed. They want you to get spotted. I'm pretty sure that's what they want you to do because they want to show you what battling is like. They don't want you to reach the second stage and not know. What yeah, it's but like the to second, like somebody. I don't know, the second and third levels. For me, I, I don't know, like, this is just the experience I had, but they, I would, like, fly up on the dude's bald head, and there wouldn't be any weak point, and then I'd fly away and come back in a second, and then it would just be there. And then it would, like, disappear, and then I'd, I'd be like, why did it disappear? Like, now I can't do it. Yeah. And it was just, like, showing up randomly, and I didn't know what was yeah. going on. Well, those are, the, okay, so here's how I would describe that. To me, that was, like, the tutorial levels, so they, they wanted you to do specific things. So, for instance, the spot on the head, it would become apparent when you would hit some like a re- hit the remote on the other side of the screen and turn on the air conditioning and stuff so he'd feel more comfortable so he would let you on your, on his head like so to me after i got past those like those were a little weird i'll admit but then like the next four stages or five stages after that that i completed like i didn't have any of those issues like mm-hmm. it was a lot more streamlined from that point forward yeah and so you we might say that the pacing is bad because those early levels are kind of confusing which isn't good for a game to be confusing in the early levels i'll admit but I would say that, like, as the game progresses, that becomes less and less of an issue. Um, and I also thought the, like, the actual sucking blood mechanic was, like, very thin, and, like, that just wasn't, like, you're literally just twirling the, the right thumbstick around. Yeah, and then doing, and like... Trying to, you're trying to, like, keep it inside this meter mm-hmm. thing, um, so you have to, like, twirl it faster or slower, and that, that to me, was just, like, it hurt my thumb, <laughs> and if you don't do it fast enough, sometimes you'll just, like, get slapped and have to restart the whole level. Um, yeah, I guess I and just... And that was I not a fun the, experience. I plumbed the thumbstick to, to make it so I could go faster or slower really easily, but yeah. I suppose if you don't do that, that would probably be a little bit annoying. But yeah. I, I like the mechanic of, like, they get more stressed, and then, like, they're getting more aware of your presence. You gotta, like... Tr- it's like a risk-reward of, like, the longer you suck, the more... the the more likely you are to get slapped and insta killed, so you gotta like time it really well. I thought that that was cool. Yeah, it's like I, I get like how that could work, but when I was playing it, it just wasn't really doing anything for me. I don't know. That's fair. Like you would, the thing would get outside the meter, and then I would just immediately get killed. I think that for me, like the main issue I had with this game was just kind of on what John is talking about. It's just kind of like the core gameplay and the way you control your character just didn't feel good to me. Like, uh, I didn't really like flying. I didn't feel in control of my character most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd, I'd do my thrust and stuff like that, and sometimes I'd hit and sometimes I wouldn't. And um, so a lot of the time <coughs> I spent playing this game was just a bit like frustrating and confused. Like, yeah. That's that's basically how I felt too, and yeah. I think. And, and and to add on to that is like if you make that mistake where you thrust and you hit like, not the weak spot, you bounce off and you're locked into this like, twirling animation. Uh, yeah. Which you get if you hit walls or if you hit any objects in the environment, and you're just sitting there, spinning around like a heck an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like like I, I want it to be snappier. If I'm, if I'm playing like a shooter type flying game, I want it to be like snappy to play. Yeah. And then I feel like this game wasn't, like, snappy. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand the, like, arcadiness of it. Like, that's kind of what they were going for. But I just felt, like, the main mechanics of the game, to me, just felt really thin. Like, oh. you're just flying around a room until you see a box appear, and then 
hitting the circle button and then twirling the thumbstick around and hoping that you can do it fast enough to not die. I guess. And then that's the whole level. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I guess to me, it was the merging of, like, the themes of the level and, like, the gameplay that made it interesting. Like, in the cooking level, she's, like, moving, the mom is, like, moving around, and mm-hmm. you can only, like, suck off of her foot. Mm-hmm. And so you wait for her to, like, put her foot up while she's chopping the vegetables that you mm-hmm. can get on. And I thought, like, that was cool. Like, it was a cool merging of, like, what's going on in this scene and, and then how I interact with it as the mosquito. Yeah. I thought, like, it's, like, to me, those were, like, interesting moments that, like, were compelling enough to get me to want to yeah. keep playing. Yeah, and for that, sure. They, they are very interesting. That sounds cool, and I probably, if I would have played more levels, I probably would have maybe enjoyed some of those later levels a little more, mm-hmm. but I was just, like, not enjoying the early game so much yeah. that I, That's and I, I kept, like, having to restart levels and just, That's like, fair. wasn't having a good time, so. There's a wild one later on where the, the daughter <coughs> is practicing karate in her room, mm-hmm. and you have to, like, keep, this is a really conceited way of getting it, but you have to, like, hit her phone, and for some reason that makes it ring, which is the opposite of how a phone works. You'd mm-hmm. think it would be calling, but then, like, while she's picking up the phone and talking to her friend, you have to go and get on her i thought that was like to me like that was cool like it was like yeah of course, th- of course i can't get on a karate chopping woman i think there are like a lot of cool ideas in this game uh that just like were ruined for me because of just how how the game controlled that's fair and and yeah. how it looked too like uh, like i think there were just the premise of the game is obviously like an amazing premise like playing as a mosquito where you have to like kind of almost do puzzles like uh, with large bosses, basically, that are human beings yeah. in large-scale environments. Um, it's a really awesome idea for a game, I think. Mm-hmm. It's, de- it's definitely a very cool idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alec, what do you think about it? Did you, like, have... Uh, it's pretty much what you've all been saying. Like, I yeah. thought it would have been cool to maybe focus more on, like, puzzle solving. Like, how can I get this girl to roll over mm-hmm. on her bed by, like, turning the... The, the TV on or something yeah. mm-hmm. like that was probably would have been mm-hmm. the most fun but that just wasn't there in the levels I played it was just yeah. like you could turn on the radio and then it would just like get up and go back to where she was and just wait for her yeah to yeah it felt like there was like a little bit of that but not enough for me to make it mm-hmm. that interesting I don't know and it, yeah I couldn't get into the controls either like after you battle somebody you, it, the camera would like reset really awkwardly and then they'd spot you right away and it wasn't very polished yeah and I didn't really understand how like the spotted the spotted mechanic worked like it would say it would that say they you spotted, spotted you but they don't react yeah nothing happens yeah. yeah I think the idea was that so like the battle starts if their stress level gets too high mm-hmm. and so sometimes they'll spot you and their stress level will just start increasing and if you get out of their range of sight then their stress level will start going back Was down. there, like, a meter That's, for their stress yeah, level? Yeah, that was the little heartbeat in the bottom, bottom yeah. left. Oh, I didn't... Okay, I didn't get that. Yeah, I, I was kind of confused by it when I first started, but then it made sense to me after um, I got swatted, you know? Like, uh-huh. um, uh, at first I was like, their heart's on the top of the screen, but then it looks like... Because I was also thinking, like, as their stress meter went up, maybe my life was going down or something, or I would lose suction on their leg or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, then it came apparent in some of like the. Did you guys use the turnaround mechanic? Because I thought that a couple that was, times. I thought that that worked. It's nice okay. that that was in there. I yeah. mean, if it wasn't in there, the game would be impossible. To play. <laughs> um, I think, so like, <coughs> like a pretty. This is a shitty point. Okay. Okay. But for me, the way that like the mosquito was kind of difficult to control, like at like in the first Don't level. Say something like this to me. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. <laughs> I'm going to say it. To me, like, I was like, oh, neat. It feels like I'm an actual mosquito. That's what I literally thought to myself. And I think I might have even said it out loud during the first level. Like, because, like, to me, like, mosquitoes, like, buzz around. They have no clue where they're going. So mm-hmm. I kind of was like, if I, it doesn't control, if, like, I feel like I kind of don't have full control, that's maybe what it's like to be a mosquito, at least from a human perspective of watching mosquitoes fly around. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly how I feel about Metal Gear Solid 3, so I get it. The, the controls thing. in Metal Gear Solid 3 are, like, so messed up, but, like, I, I think about how if you're, like, actually fighting someone hand-to-hand, it's, like, cumbersome and messy, and, like, that's how the controls feel in that game, and I like that about it. So I get where you're coming from, Eric. Thanks. Yeah. I felt like they wanted to make the Mosquito more, like, an actual, like, fighter jet or something, because yeah. there's, like, like, the barrel rolls and stuff like that, and then... There's like these big action-y like slow motion sequences when the humans are swatting at you and you can like do a 
cool dodge while their hand's coming at you, but that situation never happens because it's just, the controls are so bad. Yeah, plus you've even got like a heckin' fighter jet yeah. pod on your screen. I guess I didn't <laughs> feel that way because you can literally come to a stop in the middle of the air. So to me, like, I spent most of my time going pretty slow through the environments, like kind of buzzing, you know, like kind of, I didn't want to go at like, because when you go at high speed, I, like it's pretty hard to control mm -hmm. the skeeter. <laughs> High speed mosquito flying high past. High speed mosquito flying by. But, the, I mean, um, you know, it's okay. If, you know, if those things bothered you and they didn't bother me, that's like how every week goes. Something bothers you guys, it bother, or bothers me, and it doesn't bother you. Right? For some reason, um, only in games where you're flying is when, like, inverted up down doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's because then you're like, oh, this is how. This is how planes work. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, in no, Man, like, in no Man's Sky, I intentionally make it inverted when I'm flying because yeah. it feels wrong to me otherwise. I prefer the non-inverted, but I get used to it in flying games. You know what I mean, like, right. in non-flying games, like, I'm just like, what is this? This is bullshit, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know? <laughs> yeah, I think that's rooted in us playing flying games, like, as kids or something, and mm -hmm. being like, when actual jet pilots fly planes, <laughs> yeah. they move the throttle up and down. Right, yeah, yeah. But, but really, then, it doesn't. Did you guys? But there are people out there who play all games with their up, down, inverted. Yeah. And that's just. That's freaks. Yeah, that is wrong. something wrong with that for sure. Do you, do you guys, They're when you were kids, did you have like Joy-Con things um, for like fighter jet games? Or was that just. Yeah, we had, I had Joy-Cons for <laughs> all my. No, uh, no, not Joy-Cons. The I'm joystick. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, like a. I had a joystick, joystick yeah. I didn't. I played like platforming games with a joystick, though. So I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I played. For, like, I played. Uh, yeah, I played first-person shooters with my joystick. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. It's pretty messed up. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird. Cups on the bottom of it. I feel like yeah. every like a lot of people had joysticks. Like if you played here. PC games like in the <laughs> late '90s, early 2000s, and now nobody has them. It's yeah, it's more of a yeah, right? it's more of a specialized kind of thing now. And yeah, people just get back, controllers. Back I then, think. like I feel like controllers for computers weren't super regular. Yeah, well, controllers were just weren't as good, like, in mm -hmm. general. Yeah. Some people have those chairs that they sit in, a VR headset, and then they, like, it's like a gyroscope. Or yeah, and you strap a baseball cap on, and it yeah. checks your head, and you move your head like this, and, and it goes yeah. back and forth. neck, and then you're dead. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what that thing is called. It's a track, it's a track IR. Track IR. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have like anything that. else you want to say about <laughs> Mr. Mosquito? Uh, no. Not really. <laughs> I, was, I didn't like it. I, Alec just didn't, hasn't said much, so I just wanted to Oh, he's sure. said enough. <laughs> Pretty much everything um, you guys are saying, there's not much else to say. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like... Short, simple game. I kind of like have those things I've said about it, but I don't feel like there's a ton to say about the game for me. For okay. It. Yeah. So it seems like you guys kind of bounced off this I kind time. of bounced off it, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I bounced off I, it. I definitely appreciate the, the concept, the idea of it, but I didn't... I think it was that fun. That's interesting. I was really into it, more so than most of the games we've played this year. But In terms of games we've played that had, that feature small characters in <laughs> real-world size <laughs> environments, I would put this one at the bottom. Of all three of the of games. Of all three of them. Two of which are the best, two, two of the best yeah. games we've ever played on this show. They certainly are, and this one is not, for me anyway. But uh, you guys want to... They're all, they're all kind of like similar. Yeah, this is the forerunner, though. I guess I guess it wouldn't be a like a Katamari. Aye. It wouldn't be the Katamari effect. It would be the Alice in Wonderland effect. I kind of wish sure. I picked the second one now, because from what I understand, reading about this game online, the second one fixes like a lot of the graphical and control problems mm -hmm. of the first. And but maybe in three years we'll play Mr. Mosquito too. <laughs> the sequels always have to ramp up the promiscuity though too. So. Promiscuity? Yeah. So, like, the more naked chicks? Yeah. Like yeah. And number two, like, you'd actually maybe see them. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know. You have to suck blood right out no of way. You can't. You can't say that stuff <laughs> oh, in God. Japan. They just want to get really close to seeing that kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> well, do we want right, to go? I will say, has anyone ever bitten by, been bitten by a mosquito in the bath? Because it, like, does happen. Like, it's not like it was contrived. No, like, because they haven't. like bodies of water. So, like, if you're taking a bath... Or you have a body of okay. water in your house. Are mosquitoes you are attracted to that. The teen girl sequence. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not defending it. I'm just saying it was true it to life. Makes sense. I don't take. I don't take <laughs> baths. Cool. So yeah, I, I don't remember ever being bitten by a mosquito in the bath. I just remember it happening out in the country at my grandma's house. Mm -hmm. It's never happened to me. 
All right. It sounds really you unpleasant, ever, though. You ever have, like, a horsefly nest in your bath? <laughs> yeah, that, you know, <laughs> happens, wasps. Uh, happens to me every day. Bees in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pluck them out. Bees in my eyes. You ever uh, taken a nap and then a uh, spider lays eggs in your mouth? <laughs> you wake up and there's millipedes coming out your ears? <laughs> Every year, a spider crawls down your throat. Your urethra. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should I read a review? Now that, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Urethral spider. Yeah, away. read us a review, please, All right. before we... This is from March, uh, March 14, 2002, by Douglas C. Perry. Um, this is Mr. Mosquito Website? IGN review. At IGN? Yeah. Okay. Um, he uh, did, like, the classic thing that we don't really like, where, like, he, like, divided his interview, like, sound. Graphics. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, <laughs> like, that's how I do my review. Yeah. I mean, to me, like, that's just, like, the super product review thing. And then the yeah. first line of this is, Mr. Mosquito is a great game. It's a little short and about $10 more than I care to pay for it. <laughs> I hate it when, like, game reviewers like, it's $10 more than I think it's worth. Like, uh, that's what the people want to know, that's though. That's what they were for back then. And it has a few camera control problems. But the game's creative premise, it's brave com- completion... Uh, I don't really understand what that means. I don't know. And the phenomenal amount of laughter, sexually triggered or not, it's really how you see it. And fun to be had here shouldn't be ignored. (coughs) This is the kind of game that hardcore import and eccentric gamers buy systems for. Um, And there are few gamers more original. There are few gamers more original than this. This is just a really... There are like three typos in like this. Eidos' deft move to bring this to North America should be applauded. At the very least, rent this, but for hilarious, harmless entertainment. But, Mr. Mosquito. <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. This is, real this is an uh, IGN review. It's what like, did he give it? At least uh, he did 7.5 okay. out of 10. At least we know he didn't plagiarize it. But he called it great. It's like... It, GameSpot gave it a 6.4, and this is like... This seems like a very positive review. Yeah. Like well, t- it's, it's probably because of that system you were just talking about. They probably docked it in a couple categories and it brought down yeah. the total yeah, I wish, length. Like, they will not get... Like, a game review is before 2003. Like, your game is, like, less than th- two or three hours long. Like, it's it can't go above an eight. Like, it literally not, just can't. It's not worth it for the consumer. Yeah. Yeah, GameSpot... I, I wish that the... Their new website redesign still had all the like it doesn't have all the categories anymore. Oh, or yeah. like the, they had like a number for each category. They, they erased that. Yeah, I wish they still had that because that stuff was interesting. Let's just go back to how reviews used to be, <laughs> <laughs> and review every game that comes out. All right, who reviews now? I review. We review. I. Let's try that again, guys. We have the power. Who reviews now? We, we review. Uh, <laughs> reviewed game. Uh. uh. That was really bad. Right, John, you go. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like I was saying, I didn't, I didn't have a great time with Mr. Mosquito. I totally get, you know, what they're going for, and I appreciate like when weird Japanese games come to the West. Um, and this is definitely one of those. But actually playing the game wasn't that great of an experience for me. Um, and I'd probably give it a four point one out of ten. Hmm. That's what I'd give it. I agree. Uh, interesting <coughs> creative premise. Zany yes. Japanese. Oh, very zany. Yes. Yeah. It's a quirk fest. Quirk fest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, gameplay is super boring. Everything about this game, boring. <laughs> Got <a pop. laughs> Oh, <Wow>. okay. <laughs> boring. Boring game. <laughs> Everything about this game, boring. But Mystic Heroes, now that's some high Mystic quality. Heroes, game of the year! Mystic Heroes, good game. It's another, we bring that up every time. It's another classic <laughs> situation where Alec didn't talk that fervently about the game, and then at the end, he's like, whole game, sucked, boring. Sucked, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alec, I just so find it so funny, like, because you just have some harsh criticisms. Like, you say games are boring, that, like, I just, like, it's like, I don't know how you liked Mystic Heroes. <laughs> Not <laughs> fun. He just he just liked it, okay? Uh, but that's Sometimes fine. It doesn't matter. We have different tastes, and that's okay. And I'm going to talk about that in my review. Aiden, what do you say? Yeah. Think. I also have something in my pocket for this game. <coughs> it's a two out of five. Hey, we're all right in the same wheelhouse yeah. here. I think I think it's pretty hard to look at this game and not applaud it for its like creativity and the the premise alone. But yeah, I think that some of the execution and 
game design elements beyond the premise are maybe a little uh, lackluster at best. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah, I think to me... Rent or butt this game. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I would recommend not uh, buying this Mosquito. Well, I don't know. I don't know how much this one goes for these days. Maybe it's a it's cheap probably used copy. probably a rare cult class. While Eric does his review, oh, I'll, I'll look it up on eBay. Um, I'd say, like, for me, this kind of highlights, like, a difference of, of, of what we ha- what we value in games to some degree. Because I'm thinking back to Evergrace, which you guys have been saying that you guys really liked. Yeah. And I didn't li- I bounced off that game pretty hard. And I think, like, for me, like, I like games where, with, like, straightforward gameplay, generally speaking, like, that I can get into pretty relatively quickly. Oh my god, it's $91 on eBay. Yeah, Mr. Mosquito, your lowest, happy, yeah. your lowest price is $91. Don't, don't buy it, just don't buy it. Yeah, just I would, watch. But it's a fun game, but just it's not worth $91. Oh wait, no, pre-owned, $28. Mm, or $24. Uh, it's maybe like a $5 pickup. Um, this doesn't come with the box, though, so what's the cool. point? Um, but anyways, and so to me, like like the arcadey nature of this, like that just makes it, I guess, quick, quick, like I can just pick this up, I can play it, and I can enjoy it. And to me, like, that's what I look for when I play video games in general. And so, um, it's hard for me to, like, get into games where you have to, like, invest more than that. Um, so to me, this was a fun game that I enjoyed playing. I liked the gameplay. I thought, I really liked the story. Like, really, I, Mm -hmm. like Aiden said, very creative, original, um, concept for a game. So to me, I mean, it's a four out of five. I really like this game a lot. Cool. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Eric. Yeah. That was oh, not your ah, rating system. It's four blood bags out of five. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. It's four blood bags out of five. I planned that mm. this afternoon. I was so excited to say blood bags. <laughs> Go for a blood bag right now. Ooh, no blood bags makes me think of no. Vampire the Masquerade. Baby. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is within our vampire uh, cod cod cadre. Let's throw in the vampire column. Yeah, uh, just another vampire game on the Pixel Report. Vampire of the Masquerade Bloodlines First 2. First one of 2019. They announced the second one. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's on its That'll way. That'll be interesting to see what happens there. I also really want to play Vampire. I'm like, kind of, like, that game looks really, really interesting. It's on sale this week. Where? On um, Humble Store. Oh, I sh- okay, I gotta look at that, because I, I really want to try that game. Um, anyway... That, so that's uh, Mr. So Mosquito. I'm to the Pixel Report. I'm not going to say it. Uh, it's up to I was going to say, I want to I wanna play Return to Oberdin with you guys. I think that might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, yeah, buy, can... I'd buy it so that we could come get together on a Friday night and play Return to Oberdin. Yeah, okay. I, I do want to play that game. But that's do we good. get to take a shot anytime the screen has no colors on it? No, because then you'd be, you'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you can All right. Uh, that's Mr. Mosquito. Interesting title. Right? Uh, why can't it be Mrs. Mosquito? These games are uh, sexist. I don't know. Just what, the presence of a male this. mosquito doesn't make something sexist. Do you guys want to hear some news? Yeah, uh, some, give me the news. Can I get a Here's little the news. theme song? Alex, theme song. Alex, Alex, give, it to, Alex yeah. give it to us. Give it the news song. Oh my god. <laughs> I was thinking more like a bump 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 yeah, you look like a little big planet puppet. <laughs> <laughs> this week in the news, I have a GamePro magazine issue 162. Oh from, yeah, we got it. more ed- letters to the editor. This is from March 2002, which is you know that's when Mr. Mosquito came out. So, and you guys want to hear, hear some letters to the GamePro editors? I love letters to the editor. <laughs> I hate these. All right. <laughs> wait, really? You're gonna love yeah, these because gamers are awful. People. Wait, 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 but do you like doing them on the show? No. Okay. Okay. Like to me, they make stupid, me mad. These fun. are these are good ones. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Solid Snake Trader. Okay. <gasps> this is coming in from Andrew, Andrew Maddox, and he says, "Please tell me I'm seeing things. Please tell me this is just a horrible rumor." Metal Gear on the Xbox. <gasps> if this is true, how could Mr. Kojima betray his loyal Metal Gear fans? 
I was under the impression Metal Gear was exclusive to the <laughs> PlayStation 2. Metal Gear must not turn to the dark side. Turn away from the dark side, Mr. Kojima. Wait, really? It does. That's the li- that's I thought the last line him. was ad-libbed by you. Oh, my Nowadays, God. Yeah. That's what they actually now, wrote. Nowadays, you, More you look at it. More people will then. get to play the game got, I uh, want to play. Oh, no. <laughs> we got Death Stranding coming out only on PS4. It's probably all because yeah. of his... Well, Sony's they're, producing they're, that game. The now. reply from GamePro is, uh, they say, by your logic, Metal Gear should have never left the NES so as to not betray loyal fans. That's a good point. Good. I'm glad that they're actually... Yeah, they're no, they always, like, rip these people apart. That's, like, kind of the good thing about they're, it. They're looking for um, the dumbest emails they get. I think get. probably... <laughs> oh, here's another one. Uh, exclusively evil. Oh, my god. Coming gosh. in from Chris Wide. I hope I get a response for this because the very thought scares me. Is Resident Evil director Shinji Mikami making the new RE games for only the GameCube? If so, why? I mean, it's the GameCube. I'm a very loyal fan to Resident Evil, but I don't want to spend $199 for the crappy cube just to play my favorite series. Hey, that's a good cube. Yeah, it's got Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> you watch your tongue, that cube rules. Yeah, GameCube was like a oh, serious, had so many good games. Uh, yeah, GameCube was a pretty good console, actually. Yeah, it didn't sell well. No. But, like, I... these. Okay, it's so like, I understand the second guy, because he's literally just... He, the second guy is like... He wants to play the he game. Do, he wants to play the game. There, but, there, like, it kind of, like, highlights, like, gamer culture in, like, early 2000s. It's, like, really, like, tribal, like, in, as to what console, like, you're committed to. The reply here says, Your letter arrived before the GameCube even launched, meaning you passed judgment on the system before even trying the thing. <laughs> Crap cube. Yeah. Crap uh, Let's see. A is for Atari. B are there any other A? ones here that, that are going to make us mad? What's the A is for Atari one? A is for Atari, B is for back. They're just talking about how the Atari's coming back or something. Oh. Atari's always there. Or, uh... Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's, let's see, any more? Here's, here's, an ad, <laughs> here's an ad for corn nuts. Uh, Sleeper hold. Ooh. Oh, this is a good one. I saw, I saw this one. Okay. All right. Here, this, this one's a cry for help from uh, Kane and Watts. <laughs> and he says, My friend and I were arguing about who goes faster, Sonic or Shadow. I told him that they run at about the same speed. He told me Shadow goes faster. No. I told him, yeah, but Sonic reaches his max speed faster than Shadow. He said, no. As a matter of fact, Shadow reaches his fastest speed two seconds faster. I would like to know why in your July 2001 issue you suggested using Shadow for a kart race as he has the exact same racing stats as Sonic. Uh, what's up with that? I don't have a problem with Shadow or anything. It's just that Sonic deserves some respect because he's been around longer and it's his game. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, Shadow's cool too, but who's faster? I have a- and they just said, holy cow, do you guys need a life? That was the whole reply. <laughs> okay, I got a question though. Isn't like the whole thing with Sonic is like, <coughs> the fastest living thing? But Shadow's black. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You no, know, it doesn't matter. Sonic should be faster than Shadow, I yeah. agree. Um, the two seconds thing just throws me for a loop. <laughs> so that's... I think they're talking about, like, Sonic Team Racing. Yeah. Oh, we got another page that really shows the consumerism. This is the Buyers, buyers Beware. Beware page. Uh, Carla Truitt says, I was playing Fusion Frenzy on the Xbox for about 20 <laughs> minutes. And I stopped because sharp, sharp pains shot up from my left wrist through my arm. They went away after a day, but now I'm afraid to play with my new Xbox. Is there something that will keep my wrist from hurting? Bigger hands. Uh, let's see. Controller. Do they have a good answer here? That was. I mean, if you if you're using the Duke, that the Duke. original Xbox thing before they redesigned it, that thing was a that real was mass- real piece of work. Whose idea was that? Yeah. I was made for the gamer man. <laughs> It's so surprising to me that the best controller of all time came out in the same year as that piece of junk. Yeah, the PlayStation 2 controller? The GameCube controller. The PlayStation 2 controller came out the year before. Yeah. And then these um, two other companies were like, we can improve on it. And I then look, look at what happened. I like the GameCube controller. None of those other ones <laughs> are interesting. The consoles now. Should I, I'll see if there's any uh, interesting news here. Actual news, not just letters to the editor. Uh, GTA 3. Quick, quick, quick. Oh, God. <laughs> Just do Don't do All that. Right, <laughs> that was already a lot of news. GTA, that was like 10 oh, yeah. Of news. But hold on a second. Grand Theft Auto 3, abandoned Wait. Australia? How about that? 
What? Grand Theft Auto 3, banned in Australia. Australia has really conservative politics. Yeah, now look at them. Yeah, um, overrun by koalas. Yeah. Do you want to know the top selling games of November 2001? Sure. Why November? This is a March issue. That's it's like so long ago. Is it the March issue? This is March 2002, 2002. and they're, they're showing best selling video games for November 2001. Maybe that's when they got the stats. Well, Metal Gear Solid 2 was the top selling Ooh, game. Oh, yeah. Followed by Grand, Th- Grand Theft Auto 3. Ooh, yeah. Luigi's Mansion. Ooh, yeah. Halo. Oh, yeah. Those are some games. No, no, no. You got to keep reading until there's one that's was bad. Was Luigi's Mansion a, like a GameCube launch title? Yeah. Uh, Tony, there was no Mario games. They wanted. They needed something. Right? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Ooh, yeah. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Oh, no. Oh, we were going, you know, I will say <laughs> when it comes to, like, games selling well, it seemed like, from my perspective at least, like, the classics, like, in, like, these eras, like, a game like GTA 3, which is, like, a great game, actually also sold really well. And maybe it's because, like, there's maybe a higher influence of, like, the game review culture. Like, I think that game reviews are less impactful on sales now than they used to be but that, that, that's completely subjective i don't I think know if that's i true. think it's got to be true though because like big publishers don't even send copies to game review companies now they'll bring in like mm-hmm. influencers and streamers yeah yes yeah, so i think that's going to do it for the news and uh that'll do it for us here let's do the news we're gonna let's die in a snowstorm Not some dragon ball z sheets <laughs> yeah uh, uh no, you don't. Okay. The kiss of the Dragon Ball. <laughs> All right. Z. Happy 414, guys. Happy 414. Happy what? 414 day. Oh, yeah, I guess. The it's 414 p.m. right now. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm serious. I'm not even joking. 414, that's 414. A, we got to hit the end button on the stream yeah, now. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> we'll be back next week with some more of the hottest gaming... Uh, thoughts and critique in the industry here on the Pixel Report. And you can find us at pixelreport.com. Nope, that's not <laughs> facebook.com slash the Pixel Report <laughs> to stay up to date. Uh, and if you want to listen to, you know, archived episodes of the show, just search for the Pixel Report on Spotify or your favorite podcast app <laughs> and you find us there. And it's 4.15 now, so I screwed the pooch on that one. <laughs> you but. <fucked> it, John. <laughs> Yep. Uh, cool. Thanks, guys, for Love being you. here. Love all of you. It's always fans a good time. There. And uh, we'll be back next week. So, see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.